Praise the Lord. We uh, would like to thank you for listening on today. We're going to start with the prayer, and then we're going to go into our lesson. Uh, Father, we thank you for another day. Most, most of all, we thank you for Jesus, how he came, hung, lived, and died. We got up with all power in his hand. We thank you for the opportunity to teach your people uh, the lesson that has been prepared. And we ask that something may be said uh, that will give people an, an, an enlightening thought of um, the word and how the word is being discussed on today. We thank you for our technical director and again, all of those that are listening. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Our lesson for today uh, is coming from Luke, the 6th chapter, the 46th through the 49th verse. Uh, our subject, our topic is the importance of a good foundation and the process of building upon it. Okay, again, we're going to do a little reading and then we're going to do a little discussing. Uh, the, Luke 6 and 46 reads as follows. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when the house... No. And when a flood occurred, the torrent burst against that home and could not shake it because it was built. It has been well built. But the one who has heard and has not acted accordingly is like a man who built a house on the ground without any foundation. And the torrent burst against it and immediately it collapsed and the ruin of the house was great. Amen. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Again, our topic is the importance of a good foundation and the process of building upon it. The Lord uh, led me to this area of scripture because a lot of times when people come in to the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and they accept him, then there becomes a problem with why they aren't growing spiritually. And so... Uh, because we are considered uh, the house of God, we are considered a temple where the Holy Spirit dwells within, then the foundation of, of, of us starting and then growing uh, into, into, a, uh, into being a stronger Christian, there, there is a disconnect there. And so uh, the word here and the Teaching of the word is going to bring us into the knowledge of maybe some uh, different things that we can think about uh, in discipling people that have come into the body of Christ. Okay, so we look at the 46th verse and Jesus uh, asks uh, those uh, that are around him, they said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? Uh he says that everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them, I will show you who he is like. Okay, so Jesus is asking those that are, are, are around him, why are you uh, approaching me in this uh, way? Why are you honoring me, but then dishonoring me by not doing what I say do? You know, as we know, the scripture tells us that faith cometh by hearing. And then hearing the word of God. Okay. And we may, must remember that at this point, Jesus was there in the beginning. He was the word. John uh, 1 and about, oh, John the first chapter around about the 16th verse says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among them. And so the word is the catalyst of building a new convert. Someone who has come into the knowledge of, and knowing that they need Jesus, and then the growth process. And Jesus is telling them that the word is the most important thing. And the two outcomes of even either having some word or not having some word. You're doing what the words say do or not doing what the words say do. And so he gives an analogy of building a house. He tells you in the 48th chapter, 48th verse, he said, he is like a man building a house 
who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when a flood occurred, the torrent burst against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. Okay, so we hear him that we read that the house was built upon a rock. And we know that Jesus is considered that rock. Uh, because that person built their built they they built their thought process on the word and on Jesus then when storms trials tribulations came they were unable to be shaken there's a difference when we encounter a trial and we're we are uh, maybe moved but shaken means to be totally torn apart and there are things that come upon us that will just tear us apart if we are not rooted and grounded in the word knowing that uh for saying all things work together for them who love the lord and who are called according to his purpose i can do all things through christ that strengthened me he sent his word to heal them and deliver them from all destruction i just gave three scriptures that when trials and tribulation come whether it be financial healing uh, uh, just any kind of issue or situation, the word will keep you grounded in knowing that he said he'd never leave me or forsake me. So this is the reason why when we are building somebody, when we're, we're teaching someone how to be Christ-like, the word is the most important aspect. It says in the 49th verse, what happens when you do not start that new person out on the word? Again, this is our temple of God. This, we are considered the church. We are a representation of Christ Jesus. It says, but the one who has heard and has not acted accordingly is a, like a man who built a house on the ground without foundation. And the torrent burst against it and immediately it collapsed. And the ruin of the house was great without the word. Without the word then you are going to have a problem when trouble comes. You have nothing that's rooted down on the inside that will spring up when that problem comes. The scripture tells us, that word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And so when you put that word down in you, it goes into the heart where the emotions are. And sometimes when our emotions get out of control, then our mind begins to come up with different things that are not Christ-like. And so when we put our word there, the word there, then it catapults into our mind and gives us a pause, a thought, a change of pattern uh, where we can think about, think about what Christ would do before we do what we're going to do. And that's very important. Okay. Um, let's, let's take it. And again, I'm, I'm teaching this lesson for those that truly are in some form of evangelism or a discipleship capacity, someone who, who works with uh, people who are just now becoming saved because we are missing the mark with uh, uh, people that don't want to continue in the Lord. I didn't say continue at a church. I said continue in the Lord. And I think we, we, we don't have a process of how to build the people. First of all, once someone is saved, and we're going to use for a scripture text Romans 10 and 9 and 10, 9 and 10, the building process begins. You can't build someone that has not accepted Jesus. You cannot build somebody in, in, thing, in the things of the Lord if these people do not believe that Jesus died and rose. That's step one. Okay, so again, on the good foundation, excuse me. Salvation has to be laid on the foundation. The second thing is our scripture tells us that we are a new creature in Christ Jesus. So in the building of the new convert, in the building process, we have to remind people, okay, you're new now. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You're new. The things you used to, that you used to do, you are learning not to do those things anymore. The places you used to go, you are learning not to go to those places anymore. Again, it is a step-by-step -step building process. 
the days of thinking that you're going to strip somebody of everything that they do, is the minute they get saved, no. Sanctification or setting yourself aside to be used of the Lord is a process. Some people do uh, uh, are delivered cold turkey from various different things, but most of the time, people need the word in order to cleanse them. And they need good teaching in order to tell them you don't have to do different things that are not Christ-like. The third thing in building that, that new converse and, and, and the process of building upon it is remind them that they are now a babe in Christ. And that they should desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow by. Again, that's 1 Peter 2 and 2. Now, again, we're discussing... Uh, the importance of a good foundation and the process of 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 of, of bringing a new convert in and showing them how to live right. Notice in First Peter, Peter tells us that we should desire the word. We should have a craving. We should have a a thought to say, I need the word. I need to know what the Bible says about this, that, or the other. So when I'm making conscientious decisions, when I'm in certain situations, what does the word say? Babies in our natural state, uh, they can only drink milk. There's from newborn up to, we'll say about six months, they're really only supposed to have milk. Their digestive organs can't take any food. They don't know how to digest that. First, first spiritually, then naturally. Spiritually, a new babe in Christ really only can take in so much. There is no true understanding of the word. Yes, you can teach them the basics. But when we get into more mature Areas of the Bible, we can't expect for a babe in Christ to understand where we're coming from and definitely not to be able to do those things that we, as somebody that's been in the faith for quite some time, have more of an understanding to do. We are going to uh, conclude this area of study, uh, and we are there will be a part two to the importance of a good foundation, the building process. Of a new convert to Christ. We're going to end this with a prayer. Father we thank you. For your presence here. We thank you for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you for the Holy Spirit all being present. We thank you for the word that was discussed on today. May it bring clarity to someone. May it be hope to someone. May it enlighten someone. To uh, in the process of working with those that are, are coming into the knowledge. Give them a new perspective of how to build that person so that they can serve you the more. We thank you and we pray. Amen.